the two weekend starters from last year, just who were kind of the top guys you see being in that competition this fall, and what do you want to see from those guys this fall? Well, yeah, obviously it <clears throat> doesn't answer your question, but kind of starts with Drew Beam's leadership. He's been a a rock and, and kind of a staple of our pitching the last few years, and hopefully his attributes kind of spill out into the new guys. And I think that process has already begun. And <clears throat> the fun thing about any position you want to talk about, we have open competition everywhere. Um, obviously, A.J. Russell uh, is looking to make a step forward from what he did last year and would be a strong candidate for doing that. You'd like to mix in a left-handed pitcher and with Xander and uh, Stamos, who's not John Stamos's kid, uh, but has been fun to be around and fun to joke around about that. Um, and, and others, uh, there's there's too many candidates to list that I think could pop into those roles. And to be honest with you, we don't need to settle into a starting rotation until SEC play rolls around. Eric and then Ben. Tony, you got it. Yeah, um, I'm rusty on the interviews. I'm glad you brought him up because he's a direct answer to what we were just talking about. And when you looked at him as a freshman, he's getting solid innings, competitive innings, SEC innings as a freshman on one of the best teams in the country in 2022. Um, and then a frustrating year for all last year where he couldn't get out there consistently with just some soreness and no major injury. Uh, but I think he has a lot of that past him now. Um, he's got a lot of spring in his step when he's at the park and then the ball's jumping out of his hand pretty good. And when you think of starters in our league, a lot of those guys are not just durable bodies, but big physical guys and, and why it is just that. Uh, and now he's got some experience to boot. Uh, so when, again, reflecting back on his freshman year, if we could predict the future, we thought he'd get more innings as a sophomore and then be a strong candidate to be a starter on the weekend for us this year. But like I said, there's a lot of open competition. So if he were not able to capture one of those roles at any point in the year, I think he can pick back up where he left off in 22 and serve a major role for us. Tony, I know a lot of those arms are in open competition right now and rolling on a new client at this point later, but three transfers that you added, Stamos, Coffey, and Snee, what did you like about them in the recruiting process? And a Snee, a Coffey, could they be a guy that, that starts for you? Yeah, both are fully capable of starting. I mean, you could, uh, I, I don't really like kind of lumping guys or into a specific category that they are, they're not. Uh, with Snead, he's got such big stuff and at times I think had really short burst outings for Wichita State last year. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what he is for us. He'll be given every opportunity to show that he can start, um, but also could be a powerful arm out of the bullpen. Um, and then, you know, Stamos did a lot of different things. If you look at Cal last year, his time there, uh, he bounced around in a lot of different roles, served as an opener uh, even, even, and then Causey, even though he's a low slot guy, again, you might say, well, this is a guy that comes in as a situational righty for you out of the bullpen. He's shown that he's capable of starting. So, But overall, those three guys, maybe it's because we haven't inter-squatted yet. The three best things or the, th the best things that those three guys bring to the table every day is just their vibe and their attitude. Um, they're good kids. They're willing to learn. Uh, and they certainly are fun to be around. So Mike, Brian, and then Reese, and then Caleb. What's the big for you having a guy like Zane back and how is he doing with his team all so far? Yeah, I think for Zane, Denton, the first thing you got to do is reflect on what he did last year um, was kind of add to the – it's been a nice list of magical moments uh, that we've had here, and there's no way you can have those. You can't coach him and you really can't train for him in practice. The only way to have them is when you have perseverance, uh, which he certainly had throughout all of last year. Not that he hasn't had it prior to last year too, but a ton of it last year. Um, and then our team really came close together at the end and he was a big part of that. Um, this year, uh, the first couple of scrimmages, I know he won't be a part of. He's, he's handling some things that he has to. Uh, but again, like last year, He's been able to manage a lot in his life on and off the field and done very well at it. And I think the fact that he's in a supportive environment here, it's kind of helped him progress the way that he has. A lot of people who get to work with Marcus Stone. What's he bring to More personality than he had on his official visit. He didn't say anything on that on the visit, and we quite didn't know everything we were getting out of out of him other than a respectful, good kid 
good teammate, good worker, uh, some lineage there with his father playing in pro ball. Um, and it, it doesn't take long to look at him to see that he's very athletic and has a lot of potential. But what he has sprinkled in, in addition to those three pitchers I mentioned, is just um, unless he's tricking us, which I hope he's not, great dude to be around every day. You know, when you come to work every day uh, and you're a baseball coach, you probably don't label it work because it's fun. Uh, you get to wear athletic clothing and, and bounce around uh, on the field with the guys. So when you are changing in the locker room and you get out of your car, you want to come to the field with guys that you're excited about, not just working with, but being around. And he's a strong combination of both. He's fun to work with on the mound, um, at the plate, um, and then, of course, defensively too. Uh, but again, in addition to those three guys, Wyatt back to full strength. Um, the consistent theme for the coaches when we meet and have a roundtable discussion about these guys is not how many homers do we think they're going to hit or because they can hit BP homers, can they hit them in a game? And he's going to need some reps to do that, being from a northern state like I was. But um, the group's been, been a pleasure to be around. That needs to get stronger as we go forward, not, not weaker. What do you expect out of the catcher position when you have three guys back there to start for Eagles? Yeah, Cal had um, you know an operation that a lot of guys have that are hitters with his ham eight bone. Um, so he's out right now. And rather than kind of sit on the sidelines and either feel sorry for himself or just be inactive, he's almost kind of taken on the role of an extra coach. And because of his experience, we're good with that. And because he's such a likable dude, his teammates are with it, or are good with it. So that's been pretty, pretty cool to see. Uh, and is a good example of what I'm, I'm harping on uh, with the environment we have over there. Um, but you got Chuck, who's just a guy who will probably be a CEO of a company one day which means you're certainly not afraid to put him in charge of a, a pitching staff or in charge of anything else as it relates to defensive duties behind the plate. Um, and then we have one of the more talented freshmen in the country in Stone Lawless. And then two guys who you could just take away their catching duties with Peebles and Bargo coming in, and they could be middle of the order bats for a lot of people in the country. Um, so it'll be a fun one to sort out. And the thing that I think they've already bought into is when Coach Elander works that intensely with you every day, and you have an opportunity to learn from a guy like Frank Anderson on how to handle pitchers, you're going to get better. So if each one of those guys gets better every day, I think most of them will have a pro opportunity. They'll all have an enjoyable experience, and we'll have true, true depth at the most important position on the field or the toughest position on the field to fill. Can you kind of expand on Bargo a little bit? What's it out there for you personally? The biggest thing is he just wanted to be here. Um, Hey, in recruiting, we all um, go probably overboard on listing the positives and, and maybe you tuck any negatives away or hide them in the closet. Um, with him, uh, just with where we're at in the summer, we were awfully honest with him and being around him every day, I'm so glad he's here. I look back and I'm like, why were we that <laughs> honest with him? But we just kind of laid it out. And really what it came down to is he wanted to be here. And he had his mindset on it for whatever reason, you'd have to ask him. And he gave us a few, but uh, again, he could probably speak for himself better than I can. Uh, but he is a low maintenance. Again, when you come to work every day, you like guys like this. He is a low maintenance blue collar worker. Um, and that's a credit to his family and then how he has shaped his career, probably a little bit of even as, you know, where he has spent his, his college time prior to here. Uh, but he's not afraid to work and he kind of is that, you know, keep his head down. Yes, sir, guy that you really like. And on top of it, um, you know, hit a, hit a big homer against us last year. He's capable of hitting for average and, and a little bit of power as well. But he could probably end up playing anywhere on the field. Uh, so during scrimmages, we'll bounce him around like crazy, and hopefully it doesn't drive him crazy because uh, I think it can benefit, benefit him a little bit down the road. Hey, what are your – sort of options right now at shortstop and, and what are the what's the toughest priorities you're you're looking at in terms of finding a guy there? Yeah, I was out there the other day and uh tried to field one. It popped out of my glove. So I've been eliminated. It's too early to eliminate anybody else because uh we've had a lot of guys run over there, whether it's during BP and it's on their own or during practice, you know, we ask them to kind of go to where, wherever they want. And Heck, who wouldn't want to be an SEC shortstop? Now, I was speaking with one of my friends uh, who uh, knows nothing about baseball, but he does follow the team, and he said, who's your shortstop? And I said, we don't have one. 
And what I meant with that answer is just, I don't even know that there's necessarily somebody we're targeting to be the guy or someone that's a front runner at this point. Uh, but I certainly feel comfortable that we have several options at that position, whether you get a guy who uh, turns an ankle on a base or you feel like Trey Lipscomb, who we knew could play shortstop, we felt we were better with him at third in the combination. So it might come down to just what's the best overall combination. But right now we have several guys that are going to become better players and better infielders and better people uh, because there's a few guys pushing each other at that spot. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, um, we're under the watchful eye here of Tyler Johnson, who's our sport administrator and probably goes to bat, no pun intended, for our program more than anybody uh, in the administration. And of course, our SID, Sean Barrows, is here. And I knew I had this, but I'm not a good waker upper guy in the morning. So I just want to make sure I have clothes on, unlike the guy that was in the DFW airport uh, a week or two ago. So, um, yeah, I, I honestly would rather not be wearing this hat. It was a gift last year, and it's a great hat, but that was last year. So no message trying to be sent. Uh, I'm not into politics or, or uh, subtle messages at all. Uh, I like to wear comfortable clothing, or if somebody gives me something for free, I'll certainly wear it, uh, hint, hint, to anybody listening. So, you know, the, it, it was last year, and, and to be honest with you, if I was to wear anything with Omaha, written on it intentionally or for style purposes around the building, it would be a reminder that the next time our program's fortunate enough to be there, we need to play better. Um, so that's a weird and long answer for a first question. What was the second one? Or was there one? Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, good. I, I like our report. We'll just do three more, right? And we'll go to Eric and then Mike and then Mike. Well, you just obviously a lot of attention around Philly and picking him up over the offseason. What has he been able to add and just adding him in general? What did that mean to your program to go to Biden's country? Yeah, the, the fun thing about um, our interactions at the beginning of the year when you say your name, where you're from, and then we try and follow up on that and get the guys to know each other um, as quickly as possible. The consistent theme with him is he just wants to win. And it's one thing to say that because many kids uh, will do so, but you can sense that coming off of him, you know, the vibe that he presents and then also in his actions, the way he is. And I think he is here to make himself better and to win. And uh, I, I, I've been impressed at how quickly he's kind of taken to his teammates and how quickly they've taken to him. He is not um, a loud jokester or um, a big time, you know, I don't wanna say big time personality because I like his personality, but he's not as outgoing or as loud as a guy like Evan Russell, let's put it that way. Uh, but for him to interact with and get acclimated so quickly with our team is huge because he comes from one of the strongest programs in the country. He's already spent a couple years in college baseball. You don't want that mercenary feeling like, hey, this guy's just here to help us for maybe a year and then move on. Uh, it's been quite the contrary. Eric, Tony, you mentioned uh, in the past how important fall is for your team to come together to kind of figure out kind of who you guys are uh, before the season actually starts. When does that start to take place? Is it a week, a month? Do you have to get into a fall story? What does that happen? It, it depends on the team. And um, one of the returners from last year, well, I'll just say it, KT um, is such a different kid to talk to as a freshman. You know, I don't have kids of my own, but that freshman year to maybe sophomore year, even freshman to junior year, it's so fun to see how much they change. And uh, not that he was an immature kid, but he's increased so much in the maturity category. He's fun to sit down and pick his brain. And we had a, a convo up in the office and he basically said, our team right now, our group is probably about where we were at when we played in Memphis last year, which was near the end of the fall. Um, it was a scrimmage day or, a, you know, a game against an outside opponent where you can really find some things out about yourself. And uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's the makeup of the guys, uh, the extra motivation, the enjoyment and seeing the construction. Um, it, it's, it's been a quick turn and, uh, the freshmen have been a part of that too. Sometimes they're on the outside looking in and it takes a while for them to be a part of this group, but you can't pick and choose when it's going to happen. There are some things that can help speed it up and you can be proactive about it, but ultimately it's about the people and, uh, 
I feel like we have good people over there at our stadium. Talk to you, Mike. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, when you stay in a hotel, you travel recruiting or you guys have to travel to watch our teams and the hotel says, excuse our progress. And then you hear like a drill when you're trying to sleep at 7 a.m. or whatever. That's their way of saying too bad, too sad. But we're, we're making you should be happy. This is going to get even better down the road or. Uh, you know, if we had a, a comic up here like Mancuso, we could we, we could say it better. But um, I think for us, it's a little bit of a headache. You could look at it that way, um, like the 7 a.m. you know drill bit you hear, or you could look at it as the sign that says we're making progress. And I think our kids are kind of amped up every day to see literally the future right in front of them. And uh, I know people expected to see construction uh, as soon as the program really started to have significant success, and it doesn't work that way. It is an absolute grind and it's a process that comes with a lot of paperwork and people lobbying and raising money. And there's too many people to list that we need to be thankful for. Uh, but probably the biggest group is the players that have come before this team. Um, and I know some of them have been a part of it. I mean, but Drew Beam freshman year um, are to thank more than anyone. And it's just really cool to look out the window or to get out of the car in the morning and, and see that. And it'll be even more fun when it's complete, at least this phase of it for this year. How important will cross training be this fall to give yourself as many options as possible? And how much do you anticipate Christian Moore working towards that? Well, right now he's made the decision he's not going to leave there until I tell him, um, which is fine. Well, again, we'll see how it works out. Um, I think it's pretty evident for us to be the best version of us. We need him to be uh, who he is on the field, which has been, you know, obviously strong in the first two years. But now this year, we need him to be a leader as well. Uh, so regardless of what spot he's doing it from, because it could be from the dugout at times, um, hopefully that means we have a good lead or something like that. But um, in the clubhouse on the field, he needs to be a leader. And I feel he can do that in any position. But it's short. You are in the middle of the field. And um, let's let's be honest with each other. It's attractive for scouts to see a guy that is athletic enough to play in the middle of the field. Well, I don't mean to speak for scouts at all, but um, if you make Team USA, you're probably athletic enough to be somewhere on the field at, at the pro level. So it'll work out the right way. And I like the determination that he and some others are hungry to either capture that position or another, or just a position in general. Um, but again, there's options. So maybe we tinker around a little bit and just find that best combination or let it be the best man win. And uh, there's a variety of experience there, whether it be junior college, transfer portal currently in the program, or just freshmen that you know, have played at a high level at some of these events these guys get invited to. Uh, so I feel like everyone will be ready. We'll play the guys that are just most ready or most developed. And then if I could have a crystal ball, I think as the season goes on, someone's going to knock on the door and, and, and kind of walk through and maybe get innings uh, that they weren't getting early in the year. And maybe there'll be some other things that kind of evolve as well. Thank you all. Uh, Hunter,